Welcome back to the Rex Rinse Garage. I'm Chris and we're resuming progress on the back half of the Ranger. I hacked the back of the frame off right behind the cab and with tube work, I'm completely building everything custom from there back to make it exactly how I want it. On this episode, we're going to build the coilover and bypass mounts. And I think I'm going to do a fuel cell mount while I have easier access before I add more tubes onto the back. So we'll see how long it takes to do these coilover bypass mounts and go from there. It's been about a week and a half to two weeks since I started building those shock mounts and that initial process that you just saw. The next step, which you know, I don't have footage of, was making my shock mount template. So this is just some RAM board. I use cardboard or a beer box or anything like that. And I will draw out my design, get all of my measurements, and then transfer that on to sheet metal. And that was my plan. Um, and I've done that tons of times before and it works great. Then I got to thinking, you know, I'm in the new shop. I'm really taking my time on the build right now. And I'm wanting to do things how I've always wanted to do them. And I, I could have the truck down for a week and a half while I wait for brackets. So what I decided to do, I took my template that I made. I taught myself how to use uh, Fusion 360 on the computer. In about four hours, I was able to make this plate. So I took my design and transferred it to the computer and then had this laser cut out. And it turned out awesome. It's exactly how I wanted it, but I didn't just stop there. A big part of the reason why I wanted to do this on uh, the computer is to make an overlay plate. So this will go right on top and it will provide a lot of strength, but not a lot of weight, beef up the bolt holes. And I got these cool uh, cutouts that I could weld together and have fun with that. This plate, this is not something I would want to cut out by hand. It's doable, but to get all these cutouts and radiuses nice, it would be very time consuming and very difficult to make four of them, especially four that look exactly the same. I'm extremely happy with how these turned out. Uh, I'll show you real quick how it's gonna look on the truck. I'm not reinventing the wheel or anything like that. This has been done tons of times. I've done it several times, but this shock, this plate's just gonna slide in there and then my shocks are going to bolt to it like that. So it's very similar to my last design. This is gonna be much better executed, much better looking, lighter weight, and just as strong. But the overall idea is it will look like that with the cool cutout there. Hopefully my welding looks pretty good on these when I'm done. I'm excited to finish them out and build the rest of them. So uh, let's get to it.
For this fuel cell mount, I've been trying to figure out how exactly I want to do it. Main thing to consider when you're doing a fuel cell mount is this needs to be safe because number one, gas is heavy and it's explosive. So with those things in mind, this thing is going to be strong and we need to put some thought into it to make sure that if anything bad ever happens in like a hard rollover or a crash, that this fuel cell doesn't move anywhere. So as it sits right now, I like how it would sit um, right kind of flush against uh, that top of that tube like that. I don't like how my hoses and connections are poking up like that, but it, it is what it is. That's going to be unavoidable really unless I put it back behind the axle, which I do not want to do because I want this to have usable storage space back there. So that's why we're putting it up here. My plan to mount this thing, um, I want to get a corner mount uh, on the back corners and it will notch around uh, this tube. So in the front, I'm going to build a corner mount uh, from that to this vertical tube on each side. And then in the very middle, as you can see the way I designed the tubes, they do slope um, towards the cab, but I don't want to have a huge unsupported span. So I'll probably do a bridge between those two tubes and um, have like a little uh, section in the middle that will just support the center of the tank, mainly because I don't want this thing to sag over time with the weight of fuel. I mean, this is gonna be a couple hundred, over, over a couple hundred pounds of gas in there when it's completely full. We'll use those corner mounts to locate the cell forward and aft and side to side, and that'll keep that secured. But the main thing is in a rollover, you don't want this thing toppling out. So what I'm gonna to do to that, I'm gonna build something similar to what I did the first time with this, but it will go across the center of the tank, basically make a strap out of plate steel, and it will go from one tube to the other, and I will do some welding bungs um, here, like probably three on each side of welding bungs, and that way it will have plate steel that goes directly across it, it will bolt here, with that, going, with that strap basically going across to the very middle of the tank, it will be very strong and should mount really well.
Real quick, I wanna show you guys the fuel cell mounts that I did before I drop it down in there. So I have uh, corner supports, front and aft, and then I did a little center support uh, just to help support the center of the tank to keep it from sagging when it has a full tank of gas or anything like that. Really simple design on the bottom. I uh, just cut a lot of uh, eighth inch and made little mounts. I got really kind of lazy when I did that center one. And again, you know, I just did a little quick piece of sheet metal to span it and then a little support on the top to help uh, brace that weight. And up here I have three welded bungs on each side and those will uh, strap down to the lid, which I will show you guys in a second here. Here it is in and seated. Sits pretty dang nice. Um, I need to get more hardware. I'm probably gonna do some stainless Allen heads on those or something like that, but I added these supports across it just to give it a lot of strength in case it does roll over to help contain the fuel. And then it also actually acts as a nice little mounting location for my strap when I go to pull it in and out. But overall, I think it worked out pretty good. Um, yeah, the main part of it is held up, you know, on the top. And then I have my supports down on the bottom just to locate it forward and aft and keep it from moving around. This took a lot longer than I anticipated to build the fuel cell mount and the shock mounts. Obviously, I took the liberties of taking some more time on those shock mounts and everything so I could design them in the computer how I wanted to and experiment with that. I'm really glad I did. I feel like it definitely opened up a whole new echelon of fabrication and design that I haven't had that before. So that was really fun and I'm definitely going to be doing more of that in the future. That's going to be it for this episode of the Reckless Wrench Garage. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out with me in the shop. More build on this coming soon. Happy New Year and until next time, stay reckless. <music>